All right, we've got one more example, and this involves a, a uh, definite integral. All right, so this is fairly straightforward. Um, there's a couple, there's actually though a couple ways that we could approach this problem. All right, one is that we could just find the antiderivative and then um, apply the limits of an integration. So let me show you that um, method first. So we're gonna find the antiderivative which means we just want to find the integral of this function, the indefinite integral. All right, so I'm actually gonna rewrite this a little bit. Um, I'm gonna write it x squared minus four um, cubed times x dx, okay? <laughs> so, um, so you can see we have a cubic function with an x squared minus four inside of it. So I'm gonna just say, let's let x squared minus four be the inside function. So w is equal to x squared minus four. And then dw is equal to two x dx. But you see we have x dx, so let's take one half of each side. One half dw is equal to x dx. And then we can make the substitution. All right, so I'm gonna say the, um, I'm gonna find the indefinite indefinite integral of, okay, I'm gonna substitute x squared minus four for w, or put w in place of x squared minus four, so that'll be w cubed, and then I'm going to replace the x dx with one half dw. All right, now that's pretty a pretty basic function to, uh, to integrate, so I'm gonna pull the one half out, and then I know that the uh, antiderivative of w cubed is w to the fourth over four plus c, okay? So I have, um, I basically have uh, one eighth of w to the fourth um, plus c, which if I then just replace uh, w to the fourth, or d d replace the w with uh, x squared minus four, then it becomes one eighth of um, x squared minus four to the fourth power and then plus c. All right, so now I know the antiderivative. And so if I want to, if I want to evaluate the indefinite integral, what I can do, let me just write this down, uh, x squared minus four cubed dx. I'm just gonna take the antiderivative and evaluate it um, evaluate it at the limits of integration. So I've got one eighth x squared minus four to the fourth power, um, and I'm gonna evaluate that from two to three, okay? So what does that give me? I can pull the one eighth out actually, but I'll just leave it in there. Okay, so one eighth, um, and then I, I'm gonna substitute three, the upper limit of integration first, so I'm gonna get nine minus four to the fourth power, and then minus one eighth, and I'm, gonna, I'm going to evaluate the, the indefinite, or the antiderivative, uh, the lower limit of integration, so I get four minus four uh, to the fourth power. Okay, now four minus four is zero, so I can really just cancel that out. Um, nine minus four is five, so I end up with one eighth, times five to the fourth power. So five to the fourth power is 25 times 25, which is 625 over eight. All right, so that's my, that's my, um, that's my answer. That's my definite integral. But I wanna show you an alternative way to do this, all right, with a, a little bit of space here left. Um, one thing that we can do, and it kind of saves a little bit of uh, time, if we just convert the limits of integration. All right, so we have this substitution where w is equal to um, x squared minus four, and if we put, it, we know if, um, we're trying to integrate from x equals two to x equals three. If we just convert the two and three to in terms of w, then we don't have to go back and um, in terms of x. So let me show you how that works. So what we're gonna do is convert the limits of integration. Okay, so we have an integral from, and I'm gonna write this as x equals two 
to um, x equals uh, 3, right? And, um, and let's see, <laughs> of x, I'm just going to copy this down as it is, dx, okay? And now when we make our substitution, you know, we're, gonna, we're substituting the same thing here. We're letting w equal x squared minus 4. So this becomes uh, w cubed times 1 half dw, just like it did before. Only now I'm going to convert those limits of integration. So I'm going to take the value of x and plug it into my equation for w. So when x is equal to 2, I get 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4. So um, w is equal to 0 when x is equal to 2. All right. And then um, the upper limit of in integration when x is equal to 3, I get, um, I get 9 minus 4, which is 5. So w is equal to 5 when x is equal to 3. Okay, so I'm just converting the limits of integration and then I don't have to, you know, uh, find the integral and then convert it back to x. I can just take the um, antiderivative in terms of w and evaluate it um, across these, these new limits of integration. Okay, so let's do that. All right, so what do we get? We get um, 1 half, I'm going to pull the 1 half out. And then the antiderivative of w to the four or w to w to the third is w to the fourth over four. Okay, and now we're going to evaluate it from zero to five. Okay, and just leave it in terms of w. All right, so one half times one fourth gives me one eighth. So I'm going to get um, five to the fourth over eight, and then minus 0 to the 4th over 8, which is just 0, right? So I don't even have to worry about that. So I get the same answer I got before, which is 625 over 8, okay? So that's just an alternative way to do it. Instead of, um, you know, uh, doing the substitution and then converting back to x and then evaluating um, between the limits of integration, you can just leave it in terms of w and convert the limits of integration and and um, evaluate uh, um, across those, those new limits of integration. So those two methods are summarized down here in this little box. Okay. All right. Well, that's all of the examples I have for you in this lecture. And in fact, this is the last lecture of the class. So um, I will, you, you can go ahead and look ahead at the discussion questions. This is just another thing that takes some practice. And so don't cheat yourself out of practice. <laughs> um, and uh, so look ahead at the discussion questions and I'll see you in class.